Hi, I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts. In the United States, the number of non-surgical cosmetic procedures is now 8.5 million as of 2009. In 1997, there was only 1.1 million. That means there's a lot of beautifying going on around here. Today, I am with Dr. Linda Franks, a leading dermatologist in New York City, and she's going to discuss skin preservation after 40. There are so many options out there. Hi, Dr. Franks. Hello. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me in your beautiful office. So I'm so curious, why are women coming to you today? What are the top reasons and the top procedures that they're actually coming to visit you here for? Well, the two top reasons would be structural problems with the face after 40 and also a textural problem. Structure, women are concerned around the eyes and around the mouth. We're losing volume and we're losing, we're having some volume descent. It's subtle, but it's there. And then texturally, the skin looks a little lackluster, dry. They lose the luminosity of the skin. And that can happen because of chronic sun damage with broken capillaries and redness and brown spots. So those are the three major things, eye area, mouth, and then skin texture. I like this also because we focus so much on nasolabial folds, but if you look, this beautiful little girl has them there. She sure does. Everybody has them, but the reason they start to bother us is because it's, it's a visual cue that this, this laxity, this downward descent of the face, those nasolabial folds are getting heavier, and that's why we need to support them back. Yes, because over here, here we would say she's adorable and cute, and then over here, Basically, once you filled it in over here, immediately the illusion would seem much more full. It's exactly what happens. It is immediate gratification. Many estheticians have said that there is a rampant amount of rosacea happening to their clients after 40. Why do you think this is happening? I think it's interesting. I developed a rosacea issue on my chin in my 40s. I didn't even know what it was. Well, you're classic for being prone to rosacea, which is a condition that happens in fair skin individuals for the most part. And it's twofold rosacea. And by the way, 16 million people in America do suffer from rosacea. And it's, it's, it's a growing problem. Why is that? Because people who have this condition have an underlying uh, sensitivity to inflammatory factors. It's as if your skin is more sensitive to some things than others. And the fair skin lends to a lot of chronic sun damage. From the time that you and I were young, we're both fair, and going out into the sun, every time we did that, our capillaries would dilate and then they would close. And it's a lifetime, or actually 40 years of this, that finally wears out those capillaries and they become very wimpy and a little dysfunctional and they react at everything. So I would say that it's probably best to stay out of the sun, as my mother used to say to me. So now we're going to get into a laser question because it's very confusing out there as far as all the different lasers that are available. But in particular, I wanted to ask you about the Fraxel laser versus IPL, which stands for Intense Pulsed Light, which I'm going to be having that procedure today. Okay, well, both of these devices uh, have specific targets in the skin and they put uh, to that target light energy. So that's the basis of all lasers. Fraxel, which is the trade name and it stands for fractionated CO2 or fractionated erbium resurfacing, um, interacts with the skin in a deeper level. Its, its target is the water and it creates a lot of heat and it will actually vaporize away damaged collagen. IPL is a light source, it's a broad spectrum and its targets are the pigment and the and the red in the blood in the capillaries. It is a non-ablative laser. It will not vaporize skin. It will pass through the skin and hit its targets without affecting the. It's so amazing. So it's happening underneath the skin. That's right. It's an ingenious way to pick out the lesions that you are working to get rid of. So the light will interact with the melanin, for example, in a liver spot, heat that up, break up that pigment, and then allow your own body to uh, absorb it away with natural healing. And rejuvenate the good 
skin cells that are still around <laughs> underneath my skin that basically are anybody's skin that you really can't see with the naked eye. So now a lot of women that take on having several laser procedures, which does cost a lot of money, how do they preserve their new skin that basically you've created for them? I always say that the daily regimen is just as important as any of these procedures. What you're doing at home on a daily basis will protect and preserve and promote that collagen. The bottom line is this. After about age 35, it's just like bone loss. We aren't making as much collagen and we're breaking down more. And so there's this net loss every year if we don't address it. And how do you address it? You have to super protect your skin from all things, both free radicals and sunlight. And so in the morning, a vitamin C serum, that's my favorite antioxidant, but some antioxidant to protect against free radicals, followed by a sunscreen. And then at night, a vitamin A product, retinol or one of the prescription retin-A products will help to boost collagen. And you can turn around that net loss so that you stay even if not So boost. you can either put suntan lotion on your skin before you put the moisturizing lotion on, or if you don't have moisturizing lotion, you can just put pure suntan lotion on and walk out of the house. Correct. The Prestige skincare market is actually up 6% with a lot of products these days that are actually mimicking laser procedures. Like, for example, Clinique has a dark mm -hmm. spot corrector. Mm -hmm. Avon has a new Luminosity Pro Brightening Serum. And also Clinique is launching in August another new product called Repair Wear Laser Focus Wrinkle and UV Damage Corrector. So it's very interesting with what's happening. Mm. Do you feel that for a woman who can't afford these procedures, that a topical treatment is something that's worthy? Some of these products uh, are very good at starting the process. If you've had a laser procedure, they're also very good at maintaining. The problem is, is that when we're putting something on topically, it's treating the surface and maybe the upper layers of the skin. But a lot of this damage is happening down deeper in the dermis, and so you may need something that will impact at that level. Right, so it might be worthy to save up some money, then have the treatments and the laser procedures, then use the topical creams as a maintenance program. That's right. So going back to the fact that you do have four beautiful daughters and you've been practicing dermatology for 16 years, you've raised your children the entire time, I thought I should ask you what advice can you give other working women out there that are raising children at home and juggling the career at the same time? I'm a big proponent of trying to carve out maybe one day out of the work week and I know that many women can't do that. I've always had the advantage to have, for example, a Monday off for the most part. Right, the flexibility you've had. But I will say that, that that day, having a day or having any day, taking a day every couple of months and calling it, you know, your stay at home mom day. I, I, love I it. really tried to convince my kids that it's they a had a stay at home mom. <laughs> so on that day I did everything that I possibly could. Bring your play dates over and let's do this, let's do that. Um, that trying is to so cram it all great. In have big cookies, do an art class. Yeah, it's exhausting. Those days are absolutely exhausting. <laughs> you want to go back to the office. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was very helpful. So That's I do a tell great women, idea. And hopefully maybe one of these days, uh, all working women will have that, that luxury. Well, I do know that corporate America is definitely becoming more flexible with women in particular as far as childbearing and obligations, especially with all the divorcees out there. A lot of women have the responsibility solely of raising children. Well, it seems like you do an excellent job because you're, you look fantastic. I know that you go to boot camp a couple of days <laughs> a week and work out. I don't know where you find all the time, but thank you actually for finding time for me today and for all of us. We've learned so much from you. Well, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Until the next time, I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts.